Welcome to Dunedin, the Caledonian Hall for Vengeance, Hammerhead MMA number 11. And the crowd is primed this evening in anticipation of some superb bouts ahead. And with me tonight, Howie Booth, what can we expect? Mike, we're looking forward to some great fights tonight. We've got the main title fight at the end of the evening here. Jason Smith versus Matai Toms. Wayne Knight versus Aaron Morris. Latham Stevens versus Shem Murdoch. Mike Pascoe versus Dan Reveley. And first up, we're going to see Ricky Wellsford versus John Lloyd Haywood. And Ricky Wellsford, a promising contender, undefeated at this point with a fine wrestling pedigree. Hey, I'm Ricky Wellsford. I fight for Hammerhead. My name's John Lloyd Haywood. I fight for Fight Science Gym. But my name for my MMA club is WAH MMA. One of Heidi Mixed Martial Arts. Well, he's a comedian and Billy T. James style, but in all seriousness, he has some great stand-up skills. Very dangerous if he's allowed to stay on his feet. I know he likes to stand up and throw some elbows. I know he's got a win by guillotine, so I'm looking out for that. All I know is that he's a wrestler, and I watched his fight, and he just wants to put me to, to the ground and hunt me through all those rounds. 13, 14 years wrestling experience, you know, enough to put him on his back. And Howie, we've already seen Ricky Wellsford in the last show. He's certainly a man to keep an eye on. Absolutely. That was his debut there, Mike. So we're really looking to see how he's going to develop. He's one of the hardest working kids in the gym, Mike. So uh, we really want to see how he's going to come away tonight. I've got more tire ability. My, my striking will be outrageous. It will be, be too fast for him. going to end on the ground. Definitely going to get a sub. Oh, knockout. Knockout. TKO, submission. Been training hard. Definitely. It's what I've been looking forward to for the last eight weeks. Good luck, G. Best fight I win. But, yeah, you'll need it. And let's head to the tail of the tape, brought to you by Inarana Supplements. The confident man, John Lloyd Haywood. 18, he's 10 centimetres shorter, slightly heavier at 65 kilos and a one centimetre reach advantage. And just the one fight under his belt, Ricky Wellsford, three years older, 10 centimetres taller. He's definitely the smaller of the two and slightly less in the reach department. Two wins. So tonight, the O has to go. Ricky Wellsford versus Johnny Lloyd Haywood. It's a very confident young man coming out here now, Mike. This is, uh, he had some great chat at the weigh-in. Um, he, he's really looking forward to this fight, so we just want to see how this is going to end up, this fight. Really exciting. Well, he's definitely a comedian. He's full of confidence. Mind you, we have often seen strikers come to grief against experienced wrestlers. He will really need to stuff the takedowns. He'll need to know how to avoid getting those legs taken out from under him, because you do not want Ricky Wellsford, who, in spite of being the slightly lighter man, is very, very strong on top of you throughout the three five-minute rounds. Absolutely. We have to take into account also that John Lloyd there has had a, his first win was by guillotine, so he's going to be no um, no joke off his back. And his opponent making his way to the red corner. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ricky Wellsford! Well, here he comes. He is the local boy. 14 years wrestling experience. He has been an international wrestling competitor. Now making the transition to MMA. He is 2-0 and oh, up against a striker. And it will be a classic matchup. A very skilled Muay Thai striker in Haywood up against the little mongrel in Ricky Wellsford. Yeah, look, we're really looking forward to seeing how Ricky's going to go in this fight. Uh, he's got a ton of support down here, Mike, with um, a lot of people come to watch him fight. I've got to say, he's uh, definitely got uh, that, that kind of uh, innocuous looking baby face. Yes, he has. Melt in his mouth. That's right. But uh, looks can be very deceiving as uh, people have often found out when they've gone up to compete against Ricky Wellsford. Tonight's promoter in his corner, Matt Toa from the Hammerhead Gym. The crowd very much on the side of Ricky Wellsford as he heads into the ring for the third time in his MMA career. of mixed martial arts action with a 65 kg weight limit. Interesting first, fighting out of the blue corner, representing two Matangana MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, this is John Lloyd Haywood. And his opponent fighting out of the
the red corner, representing Team Hammerhead. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ricky Welford. Well, both fighters looking in good nick. Plenty of confidence on both fighters. Let's see who is misplaced, who is being overconfident as we go to Terry Hill. Two commands, all right? When I say stop, you stop fighting, just stop what you're doing. When I say fight, start, you understand? It's better work, gentlemen. Terry Hill with a uh, fight cam on the side of his head. He'll be keeping a close eye on the action. Look for Haywood to stand on his feet and Ricky Wellsford to go for the takedown early. Julia just telling us that it's round one, Mike. Yep, as I always say, a bit difficult to keep the counting going. Round one. We're just so fortunate to have uh, such talented mathematicians ringside. Interesting start there, Mike. Ricky not touching gloves at all. Nope. Nice knee there. Went for the knee and straight away with a double leg. He's looking for that guillotine early, but a very... That's what got him the win in his first fight, so he's gone to his money shot already. Yeah, interesting though, it's, it's, sometimes it's the shot you might get early too because they're not sweaty, not slippery. Absolutely. Ricky looking to pass the guard, already moving around the back. Climbing on hooks in already. Well, a couple of strikes just soften him up there. Turtling pulls him over onto his back. That Renate is sunk deep. In. It's sunk in deep. He's trying to struggle, but he's not defending the arm. And he's tipped. It's all Haywood over. Haywood is all over. Ricky Wilson goes to 3-0. and It was lucky if it lasted 30 seconds. And the crowd is going wild. The commentary box is going wild. 3-0. and John Haywood's O has gone. Ricky Wellsford, a winner by rear naked choke in the first round. For a killer submission of the night. Very nice display there from Ricky Wellsford. Some lovely skill display there. So got the takedown, got out of got out of that guillotine and straight onto his back, pulled off that lovely rear naked choke there. And the crowd just loved this kid. Well, Johnny Lloyd Haywood. Disappointed. Ricky Wellsford, rear naked choke, the sub inside of 30 seconds. His progress continues. And as you said, Howie, he's a kid with a lot of potential. Oh, absolutely, Mike. He's just adding to his game all the time. And let's head to the Olympic gym replay. Well, he started off badly, Wellsford, but very quick to scramble to his feet. Double leg down, got out of that guillotine. And once he managed to get to his feet, got the side control, then to the back, hooks in. Sunk in the choke deep, softened him up very early there. See the arm, crook of the chin right in up there. Secured the rear naked, and Hayward had nowhere to go. Didn't really defend the arms at all. Probably needs to do a little bit of work off his back. Oh, absolutely, Mike. Uh, this is something that Ricky's been working on a lot. You can tell that, the beautiful technique there. It's in, it's a done deal. Yeah, interesting thing there from Hayward. He, he didn't really defend the arms at all, so. Uh, a I think striker. it might have been a bit of shock. Yeah, well, it, it, you often see it though, a striker goes to ground, you really need to work on your defence. As we go to young Ricky Wellsford. How you feeling boss? Awesome now, thank you very much. Yeah? What do you think of all your fans out there? Check them out. <laughs> Crazy, right? Crazy. Thank you so much guys, everyone. Laura Fleming, thank you. Mama Bronwyn, thank you. <laughs> now listen, you little crazy man, before you snap a rear naked choke on me, let me ask you how you pulled that off so quick, so tight, with such technique. Um, at training, I really like getting the back, and I've been really drilling that, and just happened. I sl slipped at the start, bit of a laugh. <laughs> it's all good. Now who would you like to thank for, for what you pulled off here tonight? Absolutely, everyone. First and foremost, Matt Toa, Team Hammerhead, thank you very, very much. <laughs> Second of all, Dunedin! Thank you so much. Laura Fleming, Chris Evans, everyone, thank you so much. Cheers, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Ricky Wilson! Well, Howie, a nice kid, you good and hope to meet. And the hammerhead at Jim has started off in the best possible fashion. And let's head to our next bout of the evening, the local boy, Mike Pascoe up against Daniel Reveille from South Brighton in Christchurch. 
Hi, I'm uh, Danny Rebley and I fight for Team UMF. I'm Mike Pascoe, I fight for New Zealand Fight Fitness Academy, Hooligan MMA. What I know about my opponent, uh, not much, he's a bit of an all-rounder. I've seen him put someone down pretty quick at the last fight night. Um, he smiled at me and went. Dan Reverly fighting out of Christchurch, he's a kickboxer. I think he does a bit of judo or something. Watched him fight last year and yeah, I've seen him fight. Well, pretty self-contained as we head into Daniel Reverly's last fight. He's a guy who has some good hands on him. He's got some unorthodox kicks and a nice chilling right hand, which we saw a good example of there back in Warzone at the end of 2012. Yeah, it was a very good win for him in that fight against Wayne Knight from Timaru. Uh, this camp's been a few ups and downs, but mostly good. Um, good sparring, good rolling. Uh, it's been hard. The boys have been trying to make me throw up every day, so fit as. And yeah, it's been good. Yeah, Mike Pascoe in the last Hammerhead show, Mike um, came up with a loss against Jason Smith by Kimura. Yeah, Pascoe though, his preferred style tends to be on the ground. Quite strong and compact when it comes to the takedowns there. Oh, and a good set of hands on him too, Mike, so this would be a good mix for these two. Ah, keep your chin down, mate, and your hands up. Fight hard, give me a lot of heart. And let's head to the Olympic gym tail of the tape. Daniel the Reaper Reveille, he's the kickboxer, he's 25 years of age, he's a shade under six feet tall, one centimetre reach advantage and three fights, no losses. Up against Pasco from Dunedin, the local boy, he is shorter, he is slightly less in the reach, he has two wins and three losses as we head to the cage. Once again ladies and gentlemen, this fight is scheduled for three, three minute rounds of mixed martial arts action with an 80 kg weight limit. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, representing UMAF, this is Daniel Reverly! And his opponent- The Reaper got a special haircut for this evening. Representing Hooligans, this is Mike Pasco! And Mikey Pasco decided he'd shave. So both guys sporting new looks for the evening as we head to Terry Hill. You know the rules, I'm just going to give you three commands, all right? When I say stop, two commands. When I say stop, you stop fighting. When I say fight, you start a resume fighting. You understand, gentlemen? It's got to work. Reveille significantly taller. Pasco shorter, but he's particularly good on the takedowns. Be an interesting matchup of a, of a kicker versus a puncher, and that Reveille's uh, got good, solid kicks under his belt. Pasco throws some good punches. Well, Pasco on the left of your screams, got to get inside the range of Reveille. Nice little right hand over the top. Doubling up on the jab, goes for the double take, double leg takedown, and immediately trying to slide in and pass guard to side control. He's going to hit the pass on uh, Dan Reveille on his back there, Mike. He's holding position quite well, going to keep the pressure on him. He definitely wants to get to that next position. That leg of uh, Dan Reveille is sort of holding him in place here, and he's now trying to lock up the guard. Yeah, Pas Mike Pasco is going to work very hard to pass this house. This is a very nice style he's using right here. Good pressure down on Dan Reveille to hold him down there. Just mo he's moving in. He's got the underhook in or cross face, inside control. He just needs to get that other leg out there. It looks like uh, Dan Reveille is holding that leg of uh, Pasco. There it is now. He's trying to pass straight to mount there. Actually, really nice. Good pressure there from Mike Pasco. That leg's. Just the only thing holding him in place in. There he goes straight oh, to mount. Straight into mount. He's on top. Now let's see if he starts to rain down the shots. At this stage, Reveille in deep trouble. He's giving him his Turned back over early. his back straight away. Dan Reveille's got to get up and get going straight away before these hooks get sunk in nice and deep here. Well, not really using the seatbelt grip there at this point to pull him over onto his back. Reveille half out. He's half into the reversal. It's right in between, isn't it, Mike? Either Mike takes his back or Dan's going to end up on top. Yeah, at this stage, Dan Reveille doing the right yes, thing. He's just shuffling around to his left. He's working into Mike's guard there, though, so we'll see what happens from here. Nice yeah. wee elbow there from uh, Dan Reveille. Pesco's got, bar, a, yes. Pesco's got an arm, up. but he managed to slip out. And nice. we're back up into Reveille's territory. Good start there from Mike Pasco. Misses with the right hand, but there's a nice little right hand from Reveille, and I like the way he's hooking that over the top of the shoulder. That height's really working to his advantage. Nice well, knee there. Nice, nice knee right knee. into the ribs. And he felt Another that, and he game. felt that shot again. Those, those right knees right into the floating ribs there from Reveille. Nice kick there. 
Some good strikes there from uh, Mike Pascoe. Pascoe's just a little wild. There's a big right hand over and the there top. Is a game. And there is the Can he recover from that? Rivoli all over Pascoe. He is chilled. He Definitely is struggling. The right referee now. must be looking at this extremely closely. Now it's out. Outstanding. Great finish there from uh, Dan Rivoli. Well, Terry Hill let it go as long as he could. Dan Reveille landed a pair of right hands, and from there, it was all she wrote. Mike Pascoe really hurt, suffered a succession of hammer fists. There's the short right hand, oh, boom, beautiful. and those Money. legs went out from under him. That second one, equilibrium gone, and from there, Reveille knows how to finish a fight. It really, it really was came a in, nice didn't little short right hand, boom. And from there, just came on top, and it was just hammer fist for money or love there. Short right hand on the chin, hooking right hand. And Great NZ MMA replay there, moment, Mike. And it is good night, Irene, at full speed. Well, you blink, and it's all over. Two finishes inside of first round so far at the Caledonia Hall. Mike Pasco back to the drawing ward. And Daniel the Reaper Reveille takes his record to 4 and 0. Oh. Very convincing win there for Dan Reveille. He sure likes fighting in Dunedin. <laughs> well, Pasco actually doing quite well in that fight. He looked to have the wood on him on the ground, but once he got chilled by the right hand, he just couldn't recover. Ladies and gentlemen, with 43 seconds left in the very first round, your winner by pound and pound knockout fighting out of the blue corner, Daniel Reveille! Well, hard luck for Mike Pascoe, the Reaper Reveille, the Christchurch boy. He's not from around these parts. He's managed to take one out of the hometown. And we'll be back shortly after this break with fight three. Fighter needs heart. Every fighter needs to dig deep when they're out of breath, when they're on the receiving end of a good strike, when they're in a tricky situation. The more you put into training, the more heart you have, the better. you're going to be better off. Heart, right here, mate. Heart's getting punched in the face, smiling at the dude and punching him back. I'd like to think I've got a lot of heart. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's a struggle sometimes, but you pull through when you get in the ground and pound. Just got to. Dig down deep, suck it up, and lay the smack down back. Heart, te mana o te toa, ariki tanga. I've got the two best examples of heart, uh, the two best um, sources of motivation come from my sons. That would be probably the biggest thing that people don't understand is uh, third round when you're tired and you can't breathe and you want to spew, heart is what gets you to the end. So. you got to have it in this sport. If you don't have it, you, you don't belong. Heart's probably my biggest strength. Um, I like to think that I'll go and go forever, so you have a pretty big heart to get it over me. Heart, oh, you either have it or you don't. Heart, heart's all I've got. I'm going out there. My heart's everything. Well, there's a saying around the gyms, you can't teach heart. Shem Murdoch, the 18-year-old on debut. 65 kilos, 162 centimetres tall. He has a slight reach advantage over Latham Stevens, who's a local boy from the Hammerhead gym. He's also 19. He is taller and slightly heavier. Both these boys, it is their MMA Once debut. Again, gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for three three-minute rounds of MMA action with a 67 kg weight limit. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, representing combat school. Please put your hands together for Shem Murdoch. Well, this is the local derby. And Both of these guys from the Dunedin. Right corner, representing Team Hammerhead. This is Latham Stevens. Well, the crowd primed and well behind Latham Stevens. He's got a big ask in front of him as we head to Terry Till. When I say stop, just stop fighting, stop what you're doing. When I say fight, start a resume fighting. You understand, gentlemen? It's got to work. Okay, Shem Murdoch has a 
significant wrestling background. Look for the takedowns and the control from top position. Lathan Stevens coming from the hammerhead, Jim. He'll be pretty rounded in the striking game and have a decent defense off his back. Round one. This is our third fight of the evening. Our first two both ended inside the first round. Maybe this one will go a little bit further. Latham Stevens in the sprawl shorts with the yellow script immediately goes for the double leg takedown. Very Reverse. nice work to get back to his knees there by Shem Murdoch though. Yeah, and now Takes he's... the back straight away and pushes Latham straight into the cage. Looking for the underhook there against the cage to try for the reversal, but very strong. Yes, great base there. From Shem Murdoch, pinning the arm there. Oh, that is dangerous territory. He doesn't really want to be there for too long. Murdoch, often with the wrestlers, they'll be quite content to either side control or half guard just to rain down shots as he pushes up Lathan Stevens against the cage. Yeah, really nice move there just to push Lathan up there to uh, shorten up his game there quite a bit. But he's going to stay nice and heavy on there on uh, Lathan and land some blows there. Just in half guard at this point. Uh, put back into full guard by Stevens. The Venom shorts, black and white Venom shorts of Shem Murdoch. He's the man on top with the blue tape on his gloves. Lathan Stevens, where he doesn't particularly want to be with a wrestler on top of him, with the red gloves and the sprawled yellow shorts. Yeah, a bit of an interesting story with this, Mike. Uh, Latham Stevens. Training out at the Hammerhead Gym uh, has taken this fight on very short notice. One of the, uh, uh, sorry, Shem's first opponent couldn't uh, make this fight, so Latham's taken his spot. Very short notice and with uh, minimal training, so good gutsy effort for him standing up tonight, which is great. Particularly against a guy with a good wrestling pedigree, Absolutely. Latham Stevens. He'll be using a lot of energy and just holding him down and nullifying the arms, but he's doing a pretty good job to avoid getting pounded from the top. And again, we see Shem Murdoch just going to pin the arm, trying to get the knee across it, which means that Stevens won't be able to defend from those punches coming down from on top. Just stacking him a little now. There's good strong base there from uh, Shem on top there. He's keeping pressure on Latham all the time, yeah. keeping him working. If he uh, makes any mistake, he's going to pass or strike him. So is this is definitely, um, definitely Shem's game right now. Yeah, not, not bad hips though from Stevens. He, he's moving, he's not making it easy. He's uh, Work moving between a, a closed guard and an open guard with his feet on the hips. Nicely done to almost stand up. Trying to work Murdoch up the case there, yes. And back to the double leg takedown. And that, that was good work. He just adjusted quickly, dropped his weight, went down behind the butt and secured the double again. So all that hard work from Stevens. Now he's just got a leg through. Just through the side. into side control. Side mount right now. 10 seconds to go right now. He's going to finish quite strong in this round. Good good instinctive work there from uh, Stevens there, using the cage though to try and reverse his position. Nice use of the environment, Mike. Exactly. Well, Shem Murdoch dominated most of that round. Once he got the... Uh, Latham Stephen with a nice take down at the beginning. Got back from being taken down. But now high, high, wide and handsome there from Shiv Murdoch. And that was a good example of just adjusting to there from, from Murdoch. His man got up, he got the underhook, but uh, Murdoch just adjusted, went straight back down, secured the double. Yeah, he was waiting for that, don't you think? Round two. Yeah, it's just the, the, the chess match. Move one, move two. Let's see how Murdoch goes, standing on the feet. Drop that hand instinctively to protect the thigh. Nice little fake Superman punch there from Stevens. It'll be interesting to see, Mike, if uh, we see if any of Shem's stand-up. He had his first kickboxing fight in March, so we'll see how he goes with his uh, kickboxing skills in this game. Yes, Stevens is a little bit vulnerable to a left hook if uh, Murdoch can see it. Notice the right hand is out way too far away from the face. Nice little inside thigh kick, set it up with the jab. Murdoch's uh, range is pretty good to be fair, although he got clipped with a couple of shots, but really not a lot on that. Great base again there from Shem Murdoch to stop that attempt at a throw there. Push him hard up against the cage and he's going to make Latham work again. But he's going for another takedown there. Nice work there. Well, he transitioned from a, from a double to a single. Turned the corner nicely half. there, yep. And just in... 
Well, briefly in side control, half a guillotine in there, but that's not going to stay. Just going to keep that pressure on Latham Stevens right now. And we're we'll seeing the double this once game. again. Yep. A lot of just raw strength and raw power driving up from the hips. And now just needs to work his way out of Stevens' guard. Prop up. Impressed with, with uh, Latham Stevens though on the bottom. He, he survived well is probably the best way to describe it. Yeah, he's working well, isn't he? The crowd are really into this fight. It sounds like there's plenty of coaches out there giving lots of advice. Now look at the way that Stevens is locking up the arm there. And I'm certain that Shem Murdoch would like to be pounding down a bit further. And his feet to hips there too, making good space there right now. And very hard for him to get the leverage to, to rain down those shots. Good composure from Lathan Stevens, the hammerhead fighter. Thinking about sliding the leg over perhaps for an Uma Plata or a triangle. He needs to get one of the arms out first. Nullifying at this stage, referee might be having a look to see if it's worth standing him up. Last 10 seconds of the second round there, Mike. Well, just like to see a little bit more of a, some hip movement there from uh, Stevens, maybe to shuffle out. That one's a little bit harder to pick. There wasn't a lot from Murdoch from the top, but uh, probably because he secured the takedowns or two of them, You'd expect the round to go on. Most of those shots there from Latham Stevens were either glancing or ineffective. And the real work done. Yeah, absolutely. A repetition of those takedowns. Plenty of chat there. Second half for the third and well, final round. Murdoch, 67 kilos. Looks like he's carrying a little bit of condition. All right, good people. Let's Stevens, noise similar the weight. Both these boys, just teenagers. Murdoch, 18 years of age. Latham Stevens, 19. So some useful skills shown from some up and coming fighters so early in their MMA career. As we head into the third and final round, referee Terry Hill gets us underway. Well, he threatened to get us underway. Okay, touch gloves. Come in, touch gloves. Shem Murdoch on the blue. Round and three. Latham Stevens with the red tape and the sprawl shorts. Neither of these guys particularly sharp with the stand up. Outside thigh kick there from Stevens. Goes for the inside thigh, needs to set it up a little bit better. He's still very vulnerable to a left hook if it's thrown. Just those hands too far away from his face. Very, very loose stand up. Nice knee there though, Mike. Yeah, but the, the knee again secured, and we see that yes, quite often yep, with the yep, wrestlers. They'll, they'll go for that single. Looking there for, for a guillotine. Not a guillotine, rather, a triangle. triangle. Yep. But the uh, the guard pass. Geez, he, he almost shrieked that leg. Trying, trying to get into side mount there, but he's in a pretty good position there right now, isn't he? Well, he could, just, he yep. could, he could just uh, play the percentage or nicely move there, but uh, Stephen's very good at recomposing his yep, guard. Yep, moving his hips quite well, isn't he? Definitely under a lot of pressure, though, the young fella. And the difference between, of course, uh, jiu-jitsu and MMA, there's no geese to hold on to, so it's a lot harder to secure an arm or secure a position when you don't have pants or a, a sleeve to get onto, and uh, the, the arms are very, very slippery. Yeah, they will be now, deep into the third round. Now, I'd, I'd just like to see Murdoch just posture up and, and take the win on points. Just look for the shots. He's and playing he a pretty safe game, really, isn't he? Yeah, he, again, he, he's trying to get around those knees. Latham Stevens working very hard to keep that uh, keep that distance between them, though, isn't he? Yeah, stacked now. But again, there's the first time we've seen a, a decent shot in anger this round. Another big right hand raining down from Murdoch, but he's been pulled back down into the guard. He's got the underhook. Coming up to the last 60 off. seconds of this final round. He's, he's continually looked to, to pin that uh, right hand there, yeah, but it hasn't really worked One for him. minute left in this fight, ladies and gentlemen. One Just minute. a grinding points win. Exactly. It is a classic, exactly. classic yep. wrestler's win, isn't it? Exactly. I can't get you out of there with the KO strike, so I'm just going to grind you down. Plenty of chat from the crowd too, Mike. Lots of advice coming out. Well, I've got to say, for, for a chap who's... Uh, Terry Hill standing them up. Just 35 seconds left in this round. They look pretty tired. Both boys a little bit gassed. Oh, a nice little right hand. Trying to steal the bout. 
Nice knee that time, wasn't secured. And there's that takedown again. Yeah, well, there's the uh, the winning of the round. Wrong knee up if he's trying to push in the mount. <laughs> Changed it round. There's been some great wrist in there from Tim Murdoch to control this fight, really, hasn't it? Knees to the body from uh, side mount, side control. Stevens, again, just nice movement of the hips to, to get back in control. And I'm surprised, actually, from a guy who has the wrestling experience, he hasn't been able to prevent him from recomposing the guard. In all likelihood, Shem Murdoch in the Venom shorts will take away a points victory, but Latham Stevens taking this fight on short notice, a lot of heart oh, and plenty of potential. Yep. He's a um, really keen young man and he was uh, took this fight. And I think he performed quite well in, uh, on the big stage, Mike. First fight ever. Oh, he, he, he didn't lose his composure. He's, he stayed focused on the ground. Ton of support. As we go to the Olympic gym replay. We see every time a, a knee has been thrown tonight against a wrestler, that has been the result. We saw he looks it, like he was looking for that sort of move. We really, saw it against it? Ricky Wellsford, and we saw it again tonight with the Shem Murdoch. If you're going to throw those knees, you've got to be very, very precise. Well. Look at this guy. Shem, Shem Murdoch. Murdoch showing he's got plenty of cardio left. He's pretty pleased, isn't he? Yeah, to be fair, I would have liked to have seen him uh, do a little bit more work from up top and posture more. Less press ups, more punches. But he'll take away the win. Fighters to the center ring, please. Excellent fight, gentlemen. Good stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards where we find a majority decision winner. Your winner fighting out of the blue corner. Well, to be fair, it wasn't a majority decision. I think it was a dominant performance from Shem Murdoch. He was on top for the majority of the rounds. Occasionally he got tagged, but uh, he dominated from the wrestler's guard. But a brave performance from Latham Stevens, who goes away knowing he has got a good solid foundation. Now he's got that first bout under his belt. And we'll be back shortly with fight number four after this break. Welcome back to Fight 4 at Hammerhead's Vengeance Show here at the Caledonian Hall in Dunedin. We have Wayne Knight from Timaru Freestyle. He is just over six feet tall, 29 years of age, and a, an impressive 1.9 centimeter reach. One fight, one loss, up against Aaron Morris from East Side, ground and pound, trained by Benji Kinney. Well, he's a little bit older. This is his first fight, and he is a short notice fighter. Says he's from the well-known town of Ginganui. So, uh, Howie, what can you tell us about this man? Bit of an unknown quantity. Yeah, well, that's what his coach wrote down, and uh, no one's going to argue with Benji. He's from Ginganui, as far as we're concerned. And let's go to Dan Hennessy. Clearly taller. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, representing East Side. If you have a good look at Aaron Morris, this is Aaron. You'll see immediately. He's in not quite as good a condition as Wayne Knight. They are similar in the weight categories around about the 80 kilo mark as we head to Terry Hill. Give me two commands, all right? When I say stop, you stop fighting, you stop what you're doing. And when I say fight, you start or resume fighting. You understand, gentlemen? Let's go to work. Wayne Knight, the taller of the two. Some useful kicking skills. And uh, for those of you who had a little bit of trouble with the maths, it is round one. Thanks to Emma. Yeah, Howie, come back to the commentary position, please. <laughs> and we're underway. Aaron Morris with the rat's tail and the tattoos and the red gloves. Wayne Knight, the taller of the two. And often these fights can be quite tricky when you're going up against an unknown quantity. You see, I think uh, Wayne had his fight a change on him a couple of times, so he probably would have saw him. He hasn't even seen him at the weigh-in. Well, he's left his chin up a little bit when he's throwing those kicks. Needs to keep that down. Aaron Morris looks like he knows what he's doing. He's got that right hand cocked. Yep. Wants to get in and engage. Yeah, it looks like Wayne's trying to use his reach and his uh, reach advantage there and uh, just gauge this fighter. Yeah. 
Is it just a wee bit more confident, I think, with the experience factor on the side, Mike? I'd like to see uh, Knight just shoot a, a right hand down the tubes. Aaron Morris in the orange Adidas shorts has his chin up a little too high. Just got uh, a bit of wind factor there from the right leg of Wayne Knight. Yeah, they're both looking keen, aren't they? Look at it. Just, Aaron Morris is just loading this up, isn't he? He just wants to bring this. This is very, very much like his coach's style, here, Mike. It's just, yeah. it's just nice little leading left hook there. Right hand fell short. No, he, he is giving him plenty of opportunity. His chin is up. He has to be very cautious about that. Awkward looking kick from Aaron Morris, but as he switched to Southpaw. Uh, but just one of those guys who you have to be a little bit cautious of. You oh, never absolutely. quite know yeah. what's going to go. And you often see that in the gym. Inexperienced fighters will catch a nice little step over right hand there from Morris. Doing things instinctively at this stage. Yeah, and everything's 100%, isn't it? Yep, he is getting tagged on that thigh, but answers twice back. In kind. Oh, something there from Knight. Terry Hill standing in between. Okay, looks like we've got a thumb in the eye or something in the eye there of Wayne Knight. It's a shame there, Mike. This uh, fight was just starting to warm up quite nicely, wasn't it? Yeah, well, let's see whether it's going to be called off. But Terry Hill is giving Knight time to recover. Here's Wayne so uh, shaking his head. There. And uh, we're in the uh, ref cam with Terry Hill. Just as we try and look and see what happened. Maybe that left hand there, just yeah, there. Might have been, might Pretty much he reacted straight away. Two nice little leg kicks. Yeah, just the, that left hand flailing out. Straight away there. Knight. Just there, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I think maybe an index finger, I think. Doctor Do having a look. Yeah, Dr. J in there doing the business. Uh, Wayne Knight saying, can't see anything. And those are extremely painful once you've had a a thumb in the eye it really can blur the vision he doesn't look hopeful does it interesting to see what they go to here probably a no contest i'd imagine yeah it sounds like it that's a real shame this this was just starting to heat up nicely indiscriminate eye poke at one minute and eight seconds left in the very first round due to that this fight will go down as a no contest Okay, well, a disappointing end there to what was shaping up as an enthralling little battle between Aaron Morris and Wayne Knight until the eye poke came in, and that one has rematch written all over it. And now we head into our title bout of the evening, the ISKA welterweight bout between Matthew Toms and Jason Smith. A couple of very experienced and hard-nosed competitors in this three by five minute round bout. Matthew Toms, fighting under strike force, Christchurch. Jason Smith, ultimate mixed martial arts, Jim Invercargill, Tu Matoing, Rungo Mamo, mixed martial arts, um, and Carlson Gracie, Jiu Jitsu team. Matthew Toms, last fight here was a bit of a highlight reel, some spectacular kicks. And his striking will only have improved since heading off to strike force there. Five weeks ago, uh, I was offered Jason the Animal Smith and uh, I've been training intensely with my close friends Kieran Joblin, uh, um, Corey Gibson and um, Cole Davids under the tutelage of Carl Weber and it's been awesome peaking with, with these high level fighters. Well Matthew Tom's clearly enjoying his new company with the Strikeforce gym and he will need to be in top condition against the animal. Respect his grappling, respect his boxing and I'm really looking forward to fighting him tomorrow. I can tell you exactly how it's going to start. <laughs> Mr. Terry, we're going to walk into that ring. Mr. Terry Hill's going to go, fighters, are you ready? And we're just going to touch gloves, and it's all on, bowl. you got two fellas, you're going to unchain them. This is the main event, bro. What's the Scotty McGregor stuff? Uh, the animal. Ko koe te tangata, kia ora mo te whawhai, a pō pō. Ka tūtū te pōehu mauri ora. My message to the bro, oh bro, this is it man, let's, let's have a good time. It's all about fun. Well the junkyard dogs are about to be unchained. It is the ISKA welterweight title. Jason the Animal Smith versus Machu Toms. Well, Jason Smith coming in demonstrating he has some grappling prowess, a BJJ purple belt. 
He's useful in the stand-up, and he's got his tiger stripes on his chin. He is the kind of fighter who will never say die. He ain't pretty, but he's sure got plenty of heart. Yes, that's one thing that Jason uh, Seth definitely has. Winning by Kimura in the last show here in Dunedin, uh, he'll definitely bring his ground game to this fight. And his trainer, Jose Gomez, with a strong foundation in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu under his belt. The animal will also have a good stand-up, particularly good with his hands as Terry Hill checks the, the uh, fingernail polish. Isn't too shiny. Make sure his man is all okay. And this is a title bout. The weight limit is 77 kilos. Both these fighters weighed in at 75. The Animal Smith has 13 fights under his belt with an almost even split of six wins and seven losses. He will be considerably shorter than Matthew Toms. And his opponent making his way to the red corner. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Matthew Toms. Oh, Machu Choms, he is very skilled. He's a natural athlete. He's much taller at five foot 11. He considers that his game will have improved since moving to Strike Force Gym. He's a very considered and composed kind of man, both outside the ring and when it comes into it. He certainly will have benefited from time spent with the roster of top fighters at Strike Force. Yeah, both these fighters showed a lot of respect, Mike, to each other at the weigh-in. Uh, they're both looking forward to this fight, actually, so it's a very good match-up here that's been made here. Yeah, well, certainly the veteran and the, and the animal, one of those guys who, who, if you're not on your game, he will get one over on you. Machu Thomas, he's had a couple of losses under his belt, but he's uh, one of those guys who just keeps on getting better. He's very dedicated to what he does, and you can see immediately he is in fantastic nick. He always comes ready to fight, this man. And uh, Matt Kane from Australia's Integrated MMA. A lot of experience in his corner tonight, Matthew Toms. And he will need it against the animal. Howie, do you think he knows the words to this song? The school teacher uh, definitely knows what's going on here. This is going to be a... He's, we're really looking forward to this fight, Mike. It's um, two skilled athletes and once again, a lot of respect, but someone really wants to win. They both want to win this belt, so it's going to be a great One scrap. thing that always impresses me with uh, Machu Toms is just his bearing. He's, he's got a demeanor, he's got yes. a bearing. Great composure. And, and just a, a fantastic role model as a martial Absolutely. artist. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you see it there straight away. Plenty of respect, the boys touching gloves early. scheduled for three five-minute rounds of mixed martial arts A-class action. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, representing Tuamatanga MMA, this is Jason Smith! <laughs> and his opponent fighting out of the red corner, representing Strike Force, this is Martu! referee in charge is Terry Hill. Oh, both fighters amped, both fighters composed. Terry Hill bringing them together. And that's one thing that the Animal Smith was right about. When I say stop, you stop fighting, just stop what you're doing. When I say fight, start the resume fighting. You understand? Let's go to work. Well, the time for talk is over. Let's unleash the junkyard dogs. It is the ISKA New Zealand welterweight strap on the line. Three five minute rounds and we're underway for round one. You ready? Ready? Fight. Round one. Well, bit of switching for both boys. Yes. Both boys posturing at Southport. Nice little knee there. 
on the inside. Good work. Jason working for the takedown straight away, but those underhooks are in there by Mr. Toms. There straight away. He's going to try and work his way off the He's pace. He's landed Nicely three done. or four oh. significant knees there, and those are right into the floaters. If they don't hurt immediately, they'll certainly take their toll Absolutely. as the rounds go on. And notice when he's delivering him, he's delivering them generally when he's got an underhook in, so yes, it's much absolutely. harder yep. to secure the knee for a takedown. Nice split leg. Positioning him against the cage. Good, Good work. There, yes. Very nice. Nice scrambling. Turns There's it around. spinning kick. The trademark. Maybe he doesn't want to do that too often. Oh. There's a big right hand kick. Taken on the glass, but it wasn't enough. Now Tom is raining down the shots. Oh, the animal. He's back up, but he's had his cage rattled. Trying to find his legs. There's that side kick. Needs to be a little bit cautious. Now needs to measure his man. Take his time to look for another shot. Perhaps go for the hands rather than the kicks. Just plenty of action in just over one minute, Mike. Well, both at Southpaw stance once again. High kick again. And that's a right leg switch up kick that he's throwing. He's a little bit unorthodox. Hands are down, aren't they? Yeah, he's got to be careful that he doesn't walk into a straight one down the tubes. Jason Smith is no mug. And there we just saw a little turnover left hand. Another hard kick to the body there. Well, he's inside. Oh, oh good knee side there. knee right into the Ground river. Pound. The animal has to do. It's all over. It is all over. It is all over. That knee was just too much. Jason, the animal Smith has had the fight taken out of him. Completely dominated by Matthew Toms, who is the new ISKA New Zealand champ. Winner by knockout. Well, it was short and sweet. Let's see the Olympic gym replay that caught the action. The right leg that started it all, Howie. Big head kick there by uh, Mr. Toms here. It's a beautiful sweep here that uh, Jason performs here. Guess what? The two Toms down there. Beautiful work there. We thought he was out there. Well, and he was back to his feet and regained his composure. He certainly was. There's That's that a little stiff overhand right from the southpaw stance. That and that really it. rocked him. He's struggling to get his... Big body equilibrium kick back. And right here you'll just see oh, boom. big shot. Yes, great work. Massive knee to the liver area. His internal organs would have said, thank you very much, no more. And Jason Smith was in genuine pain. Big breath. Great stoppage there from Matthew Toms. Good call too from Terry Hill. And uh I the animal think Jason still was suffering. tapping there. Mike, I think he was tapping there. That was big punishment there, big pressure on his body the whole time, wasn't it? Just, just too much, too athletic, too strong. And the thing I, I see with Matthew Toms is he has plenty of room for improvement with his striking. He looked pretty good with his hands. And again, great respect from these two athletes. Pinpoint accuracy with those shots. Minutes and 23 seconds left in the very first round. Your winner by ground and pound. Fighting out of the red corner, Matthew And that's the big ISKA belt there, Mike. That's the New Zealand rep, Wahid Wahnikis. Well, another title goes to the Strike Force gym. As we head to Matthew Toms. Your waist right about now. This belt I dedicate to my dad and my two boys. Dad, it's been awesome hanging out with you the last few weeks. You, myself, my two boys, three generations of Tomses. It's really inspired me and motivated me to train hard for one of my toughest opponents. I fought. Uh, um, Kevin Reid from Wales, uh, Pete Parata from uh, Wellington, Dan Digby from Napier, and this guy's top three hardest opponents ever. So I worked my ass off for him, and uh, he loves a fight, so it was my pleasure to give him one. Is there anybody else you'd like to thank for preparing you here for tonight? Of course, I've always said no one gets people ready for the cage better than Kyle Weber. He's the man. I asked him to turn me into steel. He said, my honour. So he did it with his co-coaches, uh, the, the knowledge I've got access to in Forrest, uh, Matt Kane, um, Jason Costa, my close bro Kieran Joblin, who had a mean win last night. Uh, the whole team at Strike Force, awesome people, awesome brothers. Fantastic stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, check out the belt for your champion, Matthew Tubbs. Yeah, here's it. Jason, come on out here.
have here, Rep Jason as well. Fought very tough today. Anything you want to say, my friend? The floor is yours. Here's the mic. Uh, well, sorry, guys, that I didn't manage to pull off the W, but at the same time, I can tell you, man, what an honor to fight Machu Tongs. Like, uh, we've been following these guys around for a few years now, eh, bro? And uh, we've been on some good fights and stuff like that, and it's, it's good to have another legendary fight on the line, especially with uh, a big man like Machu. Next time, that's my, that belt's definitely gonna be mine. He worked definitely harder than me. Cheers, bro. Awesome stuff, well done. Would anybody like to see a rematch? What do you say? Well, Tom stakes his record to five and three. He is the new ISKA welterweight championship and plenty of sportsmanship shown here at the Caledonian Stadium as we close out tonight's episode of Vengeance Hammerhead 11.